Hello everyone. So, as a part of the introductory neuroscience and the neuro instrumentation uh, course, I will be giving a small uh, basic and overview about what are the EEGs, ERPs and how is being acquired and other requirements for, uh, for doing an EEG recording and everything. So, first of all what is an uh, uh, EEG. It is no, it is called as the electroencephalography. So, what happens is when our brain we have different uh, parts of where there are various lobes that are there. So, uh, for that uh, they will show a different electrical activity uh, in our brain. So, how do we acquire the process of acquiring that electrical activity is called as this EEG. So, it can be it, there are various methods for acquiring this EEG. There are uh, like this um, uh, uh, using an invasive method or a non-invasive method is also there. So, here uh, there are uh, the uh, there will be a lot of voltage fluctuations. So, in our brain there is a lot of uh, electrons that are uh, electrons and the proton uh, the um, basically the ionic movements that is taking place in our brain due to the sodium and the potassium pump. So, based on that there will be an ionic current that will be produced and that will produce a voltage fluctuations. That is been uh, detected from the uh, electrodes uh, from the scalp of the head. So, uh, before uh, this measurements the EEG uh, measurements you find that it can be it can be bipolar as well as it can be unipolar also. So, in bipolar measurements or in that method what happens is the, uh, the potential difference we measure is between the pair of electrodes. Whereas, in the unipolar polar, uh, method of uh, EEG measurements we will be uh, finding or we will be uh, uh, measuring the po uh, electrode potential compared between the reference. So, uh, any any of the EEG recording to be specific they will be having a, a active electrode a ground and a reference. So, uh, because uh, there will be uh, because there is a potential difference which we have to be which we have to calculate that it re requires a ground so that there will be a no uh, it would not affect our body like with an electric current or a, uh, there will be a, otherwise there will be some a mishap happening. So, for that purpose there will be a ground uh, given as well as there will be a reference as well as a uh, active electrode. So, based on those electrodes only based on the comparison or the difference potential difference between those electrodes electrodes we are measuring the EEG uh, electro uh, the channels. So, what happens is there are uh, an elect uh, EEG channels it need not be just a, a single or a bipolar uh, there will be just one electrode or two electrodes nothing like that. It can have even uh, 8 electrode channels or 8 channels or 64 channel recordings which will be placed along the all over the scalp. Uh, so, uh, why we are doing all this EEG recording is that uh, uh, we have to uh, study how the brain is actually acting based on a stimulus. Now, a brain if you say it is having all the uh, there are various uh, functions it is doing the motor uh, function, motor motor functions, uh, sensory functions and there is cognition. So, there are various parts of the brain which is activated. So, um, uh, for motor as well as the sensory the touch or uh, uh, any more any of the work that we do or the daily work that we do the walking or uh, the the other uh, the, the daily activities that is due to the motor cortex or the motor response of the brain. Whereas, there are some other activities which is taking place in the cognition of the brain also that is done uh, by with a particular event. So, whenever there is a that is the cognitive brain. Uh, which we find out is due to the ERPs that is how we give a particular event like a flash of light or a, uh, a sound or a tone or clicks anything any of the uh, auditory or the visual stimuli which we give externally and in order to according to that how the brain is going to respond to the uh, stimulus is what we uh, do in the ERP study. So, a uh, person who is having a problem like if a person is having a Parkinson disease. So, he will have a lot of tremors and there will be a lot of. So, we can find out with this particular uh, we have so many artifacts or we, we, we based on those uh, how the brain responds we can find how the person is uh, what is the abnormality that a person is having in the uh, in with the with the cognition. 
uh, so uh, there are various kinds of uh, EEG waves that are there. So we have uh, as mentioned as uh, Dr. Mahesh uh, mentioned about the various bands. So we have this uh, beta, alpha, gamma, theta and all. So the beta bands are actually uh, the, the uh, maximum which is having of 12 to 30 hertz of frequency. So it is a, it is a, it is a, cogni a, con a conscious mind, the person in a conscious mind will have that particular uh, uh, waves. The alpha band it will be in the subconscious memory uh, in the mind like uh, when you close your eyes or when you are relaxing or when you have a light meditation. So this kind of waves will be opening. Just if you close your eyes itself this particular alpha waves will be obtained. It was in the frequency range of my 7.5 to 12 hertz and the theta waves you find that they are actually even more subconscious uh, like in a light sleep. Uh, in, in, as you go deeper and deeper uh, the uh, waves and all it gets lesser and lesser. So, in the subconscious mind again they when you are in a deep uh, meditation or if you are in a very light sleep for just closing eyes we have the alpha if you have a light sleep then you will have this theta waves. So, it is in a frequency range of about uh, 4 to 7.5 hertz uh, followed by there is a delta wave which is uh, due to the unconscious mind where you find that we will be in a very deep sleep. So uh, in that uh, conditions we will have the uh, delta waves which is up to 4 hertz. So these are the different kinds of uh, EEG waves that, uh, that are pres present in humans based on the different frequencies. Uh, the next is that these are few of the variables which we can be used to classify the uh, EEG uh, activity. So uh, based on the frequency we have uh, various uh, frequency it actually refers to this uh, rhythmic uh, repet uh, repetitive activity of the uh, EEG like uh, uh, there will be a repetition sometimes taking place. So it can be rhythmic or it can be a arrhythmic also. So so in rhythmic activity what happens is there will be a constantly the changing a constant frequency that will be changing uh, the EEG activity. In arrhythmic what happens is there will be a no stable rhythms will be present. So it will be like a all scattered kind of. Uh, so that is the uh, frequency uh, the based on frequency that is how we can classify the EEG activity. Uh, so here in this uh, the voltage uh, it refers as uh, to the average voltage or the peak voltage of the EEG activity. Uh, the next we have is actually the periodicity. So in periodicity what happens is there will be uh, it, refer, it actually refers to the distribution of the EEG patterns or the components with time. Uh, so the activity it can be either a particular focal or it can be laterized. Uh, so that is about the periodicity city then we com uh, then comes the synchrony in synchrony it is actually the simultaneous appearance of this rhythmic as well as the morphologically distinct patterns over different uh, regions of the head either on the same side or both sides so it can be either in one side of the brain or in both sides we will have the synchrony for example now in case of uh, 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 in my previous uh, uh, recordings uh, in the tutorials i had mentioned that as you move from here from the front to, to the uh, anion side, uh, Indian side what happens is there will be a dipole reversal that is taking place. So that is called that is the synchronization like uh, that is because of the dipole that is there in the brain. So here if it is one side the other side uh, the, the fr in the back it will be the opposite. So that is the synchrony uh, that is taking place between the uh, two places. So that is the simultaneous appearance itself but it will be in a reversal patterns. Next is actually about the morphology. So morphology Morphology it refers to the uh, shape of the waveform. So here the shape of the wave or uh, EEG pattern it is determined by the frequencies that combine to make up the waveform and their phase and voltage relationships. So based on this wave patterns we can have the monomorphic, polymorphic or sinusoidal and transient etc. So those are about the uh, morphology. 
next I have to discuss, I wanted to discuss in detail is about the uh, impedance. So, uh, what is this impedance actually? Impedance is nothing but it is actually the opposition to the alternative current flow and it has various components. So, in impedance itself you will have the resistance as well as the reactance. So, what is this resistance? Resistance is, uh, it is it as you know it is a opposition to the direct current and the uh, and in context of this uh, impedance uh, what happens is it is actually a, uh, uh, a frequency independent of opposition to the AC current flow. So, this is uh, about the resistance and what is reactance? Reactance is nothing but it is a combination of both the capacitance as well as the uh, inductance and it opposes the AC current. So, together along because E g actually what happens is it contains a strong AC uh, signal that is why we have the e, uh, e g usually the E g researchers or the E r p researchers and all they mostly measure the impedance rather than the rea uh, resistance of a of that particular electrode. So, what is this thing that causes this uh, impedance is that um, impedance is actually highly measured uh, it is usually uh, few uh, kilo ohms it is usually that much uh, kilo ohms it should be there. So, in context with EEG recordings the uh, impedance is typically measured as uh, we will be passing a small current of uh, cu current to this electrodes to one or more electrodes and based on that we will measure how the uh, electrode or the uh, electrode is opposing the flow of current. So, how we uh, the main goal of this impedance check is that we have to check uh, the impedance between the uh, electrode and the conductive gel. Now, what happens is when, uh, when in our brain we will not have just the uh, we cannot just directly uh, record the signal, it should make contact with the scalp. So, it can be either a dry electrode or it can be a wet electrode. So, if it is a wet electrode what happens is we need a conductive gel that has to be provided along with it. So, there, there the impedance check will be between the electrode and that conductive gel uh, or the tissues or the uh, that overlies over the skull. So, uh, any living skin you find that they will have this dead layer of uh, skin cells also. So, this de dead skin cells will provide a high impedance between the electrode and the living skin tissue. Uh, the most important impedance impact that happens in the, uh, the signal to noise ratio is due to the common mode rejection uh, that is happening. So, what happens in this common mode rejection is that it is a uh, what is this common mode rejection it is nothing but it is the uh, ability of the recording system to reject the noise that is common in the active and the reference electrode. So, that is any noisy uh, sources that is uh, identical in the active and uh, uh, reference recording, uh, the, uh, what happens is it will get attenuated with in the differential amplifier because the output of the amplifier subtracts the voltage measured at the reference electrode from the uh, voltage measured at the active electrode. So, this is why the uh, common mode rejection ratio is very much important and it actually helps in finding out the signal to noise ratio. So, when if the more uh, common common mode rejection uh, of the amplifier is increasing, the what happens is the contribution of the noise signals it decreases and which will increase the signal to noise ratio. So, how do we do the, how do we uh, manage this com uh, common mode rejection ratio is that we will keep a high impedance in the uh, recording system. Usually a traditional method of uh, EEG uh, in a traditional uh, met, uh, EEG recording what happens is we will use a low uh, impedance record, uh, EEG recordings. The problem is typically solved by uh, cleansing and abrading the skin. So, before uh, before doing any EEG recording we will uh, clean the scalp or we will just uh, 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 we will just uh, we will just abrade it with a uh, electrode uh, gel. So what happens by that is uh, we create the abrasions in the skin, and that is how we are in reducing the impedance by disrupting the external layer of the dead skin cells. That by providing a uh, more direct contact with the underlying living uh, skin tissues. So this is why we use uh, uh, the that is why we use we usually clean the electrode 
electrode uh, we using uh, electrode gel uh, or any other uh, we will we will prepare the scalp accordingly for this purpose only so that the impedance is properly uh, done uh, the, along with that we have some skin potentials also to be uh, checked uh, before doing that. So, uh, uh, any of the impedance, uh, so it is always recommended to uh, have a minimum impedance of about 10, uh, 10 to 5 to 10 kilo ohms. So, the greater the impedance it leads to a voltage drop and attenuation of the bio signal. So, the lower impedance uh, would not allow the uh, transduction of the bio signal. Uh, so, low impedance in the electrode you, during the biopotential recording such as EEG, EMG it requires. Uh, so, these are the points which is uh, which is to be noted in order to check the impedance. So, lower the impedance uh, that is uh, that is how we will get a proper EEG recording. Uh, so, it will be if it is uh, lower the uh, impedance uh, there will be a, a pr lesser voltage drop and uh, the pr even the signal will be conditioned in such a manner that we will get a proper uh, signal. So, that is the that is about the impedance. Uh, these are the uh, usual pro electrode montages that has been used uh, in the uh, brain for collecting the EEG signal. So, here uh, this this part of the brain the front uh, frontal lobe here in this place only we have all the uh, functions of thinking, planning, organizing, emotions, uh, behavioral control and all takes place in this pink part of the uh, brain. Here in the, uh, the motor and sensory together you find that it forms the central uh, lobe of the uh, um, brain. Then the green, uh, the green, green part of the the green uh, uh, shade over here, it shows the parietal lobe. Here in this place only we have the uh, thinking, the memory, working memory of the brain, and all it works in this parietal lobe. And over in the occipital lobe, that is the blue shaded area. Here in this place only you will have the vision. So all the uh, visual stimuli which we get, we will perceive it in this uh, occipital lobe alone. Then uh, the yellow region over here it is called as the temporal lobe. So, in this place we have all the auditory stimulus uh, auditory or the MMN and the auditory evoke potential etcetera and all is obtained in the temporal lobe. So, uh, here in the next figure as I shown over here these are the different 64 channel montage uh, over here uh, uh, it is it is called as uh, the 64 channel uh, montage. So, over here this this is the nose and this is the this is the na uh, nasian and this is the in part of the brain. So, what happens is uh here in this, uh, the these are the frontal uh, lobes over here. These are the frontal lobes in the front, uh, in the inian side. So all the frontal lobes are given as F, and all the the uh, all the uh, uh, electrodes that are towards your left are uh, po all all odd numbers and the ones towards the right are all even numbers. So, that, that is the how the electrode uh, uh, numbering is being done and uh, the distance between of uh, be between these electrodes it is like a 10 20 system. So, it we will take the total of the total area the 10 percent uh, like that we will take uh, usually uh, in any of the Usually, how we uh, actually take the uh, we select this uh, in electrode position is first we will fix the uh, uh, we will fix how far we have to take. So this this two side this here in the ear lobe in this part and this side from here we will take a, a, a measure and we will take and from from this point this point till the behind in this uh, occipital behind here we will take a uh, uh, we will tape it and find out uh, what is the length and from here we will take uh, 10 percent 20 percent like that we will measure and we have to fix all the electrodes this is the or actual actually we used to we had, uh, the traditional method of fixing the electrodes were like this. So, we will uh, manually we have to measure how much uh, the 10 percent, 20 percent everything we will mark everything and then we will uh, do the electrode uh, we will place the electrode along if it is a gel electrode we have to add the um, 
the gels, uh, the conductive gel is to be added. Uh, if it is a dry electrode, then we have to mark in such a manner that it makes contact with the scalp. So, like that we have to manually do all this. But uh, nowadays, now, now these days we have all these equipments like as in the form of a cap is it available. So, uh, that is why we have uh, we were uh, in the previous uh, in the demonstration where which uh, I was the subject. So, we had the cap that was having all the uh, electrode positions were all placed like that itself. So, we can just put in that uh, with all the uh, signal processing unit and all the Wi-Fi rotor and everything we can just directly do a uh, recording. So, uh, the, uh, so, um, in a electrode channel, um, another one important uh, thing that you have to note is the active reference and the ground as I told in the uh, previous um, uh, in the previous uh, slides I have been mentioned that this the actual electrode channels are the active electrodes then along with that we have the reference as well as the ground channels or, or, or electrodes are also important. So, uh, the volt uh, here first we what what, uh, what we do is that we will measure the voltage between the active and the ground then uh, the voltage between the reference as well as the ground so when we differentiate uh, when we when we find the potential difference between the active and the reference is when we get the eeg recording so that is what uh, here usually the uh, reference or the ground would be the ear lobes so here in this part uh, we will have the uh, we will put the uh, clamp, uh, we will uh, use this as the uh, uh, reference or the ground and uh, even the mastroid also can be used as the ground. Uh, some of the caps and all they will have a per, they will have the its own uh, ground and references. So, we have to just uh, connect uh, with uh, along with the circuit so that the electrodes will get uh, the uh, EEG channel. Uh, EG recordings. So, here this blue uh, blue uh, the blue over here uh, indicates the um, blue electrode over here is the active electrode and here we have the reference electrode and the different and if any amplifier will have its own ground also. So, when we where the differential um, uh, difference between the active electrode and the reference electrode is what we get as the uh, EEG that is how we uh, measure the EEG recording. Uh, so, the next one is uh, about the how uh, the different types of acquisition of EEG. So, we have the wet surface electrode as well as the dry electrode also. In this pic, uh, in this uh, picture uh, it is a uh, uh, it is uh, pierced inside the layers of uh, the skin, but uh, even even we can have a uh, electrode wherein just uh, it touches the surface of the scalp of the head. Uh, so, that is uh, there these are the two uh, different the difference between the wet and the dry electrode is that we will have a conductive gel between uh, that uh, the, there is an electrode and there is a skin in between that we have there should be some conduction that should take place between those two in order to acquire the EEG. So, that is done given by the wet electrode and in wet electrode the impedances would be uh, comparatively better than that of the dry electrode. So, that is why whenever when we compare the um, EEG recording for a, a wet electrode and for a dry electrode, you will find that the wet electrodes will have a smoother K, uh, waves uh, rather than in dry electrodes you will have find a lot of uh, uh, noise and all in between that is because of this impedance problem that is there between the wet and the dry electrode. Uh, the dry electrode will it is just creating the contact we will just make even we cannot do we would not do any kind of uh, skin aberrations or anything would not be done. So, because of that skin aberration only that uh, impedance is uh, being properly uh, uh, checked and uh, that is how we are getting the proper uh, reading. So, if that is that step itself is not there then the impedance will uh, be there will be a low impedance in that uh, con in that recording system. So, that is why there will be a comparatively more uh, noisy waveforms will be obtained in case of the dry micro uh, in the dry electrode system. So, these are the different dry electrodes that has been used. So, here these are the 10 uh, uh, prongs that has actually been used which uh, just creates a contact on the scalp that is all that is why uh, that is what there is no any uh, gel or any uh, conductive gel nothing has been used. So, it is just a dry electrode which creates contact with the scalp that is it. So, here this uh, the next
next pick is a cap uh, which uh, wherein we uh, insert these uh, uh, prongs onto it and then uh, we connect all those wires together and then we have we have a signal processing unit uh, uh, signal processing unit which will record uh, which will capture the signal and it will uh, do the uh, further uh, signal processing and everything and we will get the uh, data uh, the you know EEG uh, data accordingly. Uh, so, this is about the dry channel. So, the wet uh, sorry with dry electrodes. So, next is about the wet electrode. So, in this wet electrodes what happens is that we will be using any these are the, the first pick over here as uh, it, uh, it actually mentions that these are the electrodes which can be given if like the bipolar recording with I mean, if, if you do not want all the 64 channels and all we just want only a few uh, recordings from the four uh, from the uh, frontal electrodes or from any part of the brain just that much you want you do not want the whole uh, 64 channel or 32 or 8 channels nothing I just want only 2 3 electrodes uh, to be done. So, we can just uh, uh, take these uh, gold plated electrodes uh, we can uh, put into this uh, this this particular pick this box kind of thing it is called as the head stage. So, where we can put all these uh, uh, this uh, gold electrodes and all and we can just uh, put a conductive uh, paste. Uh, so, this is this is one kind of a conductive gel that has been used. So, uh, this uh, this is actually been used for uh, the Inobio cap. So, uh, for example, now this is actually um, one just one electrode for a wet channel electrode. So, it is be it will be like this hollow. So, what happens is we will just put it in one part of the brain and then what I mean one part of the head and then we will uh, take uh, the uh, the gel in this and we will just put insert it. So, what happens is this is hollow inside. So, it will create the contact with the scalp or wherever it is. We, if it is here we can just keep it over here and put the electrode like that. So, this is how we inject uh, the uh, the electrolytic gel has been injected into the cavity like that uh, then only it creates a contact with the uh, brain. So, basically any EEG recording it should have a contact. So, that is uh, do not uh, this should not be compromised at all. So, uh, even in a uh, dry electrode means there will be no gel in wet electrode means we will have a gel uh, in this is the this is actually a cap that has been used in neuroscan. The neuroscan dry electrode cap it is uh, that is uh, this is the cap uh, how it looks like. So, here in this uh, here like this um, we have to insert uh, there will be a sponge or a electrode or a gel we have to insert into the in, into the electrode and that is how it actually creates the uh, contact. So, it will uh, give a it is not a sharp needle and all it is just a blunt needle or it is like a syringe kind of thing. So, it, it will just uh, put over uh, and we can just uh, increase the conduction between the uh, the, uh, the conduction between the uh, signal processing I mean the acquiring system and the scalp. So, that is about the uh, wet electrode. Uh, then uh, the next I will be discussing is about the um, uh, EEG artifacts. So, uh, yeah, so uh, it is very uh, it is very difficult to sit uh, like uh, without making any artifacts it is very difficult because if it is in the case of dry electrodes and all even if there, if there is a small moment also they will it will show a full uh, all the artifacts will be clearly shown. So, here I will just discuss what are the different types of artifacts and how does it look like. So, here the some of the artifacts are because of the subjects alone. So, they will be they will they will do some ocular activity for example, the blink blinking of the eye or the uh, just moving the eyeball movement like that or something like that some uh, some of the ocular activity that is uh, it uh, takes place. The next is actually the muscular activity for example, if you move your head or if you clench your teeth or uh, some of the, those those are called as the muscular activity. Uh, sometimes even the cardiac activity for example, the ECG of the person is also for example, in the head also even in the head also there will be the blood movement or so 
the so the cardiac activity can be sensed even along with the EEG. So the uh, ECG uh, is uh, the is another one artifact that is there. Perspiration is due to the uh, sweat sweat uh, sweating or uh, even uh, sometimes you find that the scalp it is having a lot of uh, sweats or sweat. Uh, if it is sweating, then that will so that also acts as an artifact. The next is the respiration when we we we, can't, uh, when we are in the when we are sitting for a recording we will have some uh, yeah the respiration activity so some some small uh, uh, movement also will be acquired by the uh, the acquisition system uh, eg acquisition systems uh, then the other one is the technical artifacts that is our happening because sometimes sometimes what happens the electrodes will just uh, come out of the uh, position so it won't be our we will it won't create a proper uh, contact between the uh, scalp and the uh, the electrode this, that will be loss of loss loss of contact that will be happening that is why uh, that artifacts occur uh, sometimes the reference uh, we will place it in a pro, uh, improper place so for example if reference has to be here if it should be here itself sometimes we will keep in some other place and that's why there will be a uh, 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 artifact uh, occurring because of that and sometimes there will be an AC interference also. So, uh, what happens is usually any of the EEG acquisition it takes place in a Faraday's cage or it should be in a place where there is highly insulated without any AC uh, currents or interference and all. So, that is another one artifact that is caused. Uh, the cable movement sometimes what happens the electrodes it should be intact in one place but sometimes what happens there will be some cable movement taking place. So, we'll due to that there will be an artifacts occurring. Uh, then other one artifact is due to the body movement. So, when we move our body like we are uh, we just make a movement or if we feel laugh or something some some movement in our body itself uh, it will have uh, uh, that technical artifacts will occur. So, uh, the next I am showing is about uh, uh, the how the blinks uh, look like. So, here if you see uh, the uh, wet elect uh, here the blinks uh, first uh, figure it shows the filtered EEG. So, here we have a proper artifact uh, that pointed peak is called uh, due to the blinking. So, next uh, the next figure over that it is it shows the just the we just remove the uh, artifact alone. So, that is the then we if we remove that artifact from the filtered signal that is how we get the EEG signal. So, the last column indicates the artifact without any artifact artifact free EEG signal. So, this is uh, uh, this is actually due to an eye blink. Similarly, we have due to the eye movement also. So, because when there is an eye movement this type of artifacts we will be obtaining. So, that can be eliminated and we can get a proper um uh, uh, artifact free uh, fixed signal. So, uh, when I mention, uh, so we, there are various uh, ways to remove this artifacts and all for uh, basically, we, basically we can, uh, we can't, um, we can't avoid making such movements. So, if, uh, like eye blinks and all we can't avoid it. So, how do we, uh, how do we uh, uh, avoid this artifacts during the EEG acquisition or EEG analysis is that we can have the high pass filters low pass filters, the notch filters uh, like that uh, those filters and all uh, can remove. Uh, there are uh, in some, so there are softwares like this EEG uh, lab, ERP lab etcetera which is having a proper uh, e, uh, e, uh, artifact detection uh, uh, module itself wherein with it will remove we, we can just select that uh, it should be the like uh, usually all this artifacts will be from uh, 10 uh, minus 10 at 100 to 100 uh, micro volts. So, in this particular range only. So, we can just window it in that particular range and just remove the uh, artifacts uh, in that particular voltage uh, threshold. Uh, so, that is how we can remove the EEG artifacts. So, uh, this is about the, uh, so first I showed about the eye blinks, this is the eye movement. The next is the um, uh, myo, uh, yeah, so the muscular activity. So, when you are clenching your teeth or when you are moving around or uh, if there is any, uh, yeah, any this external stimuli, anything like that, uh, this is how we remove the 
uh, the muscle and muscular movement and then we have the ECG activity also can be removed along with that. Uh, actually there are uh, the, uh, there are electrodes which where we can keep uh, over here in this uh, region itself like uh, between the I uh, HEOG, VEOG we call those channels. Uh, so, it will it will detect the uh, eye blinks and eye movement and all so that is how we can uh, we can remove uh, those uh, EEG artifacts. Uh, so, the next is actually about the ERPs. So, event related potential. So, as I told you uh, we are uh, in this uh, in this module in this uh, uh, in th this particular uh, potential which we are recording is basically for the cognitive brain as I said. So, how the b brain perceives a particular stimulus, how, uh, how it responds to a particular stimulus that is how that is why it is called as an event related potential a bio potential that has been created when we flash a particular event from the scalp that is why it is called as the event related potential of the uh, brain. Uh, so, what are the difference? So, here in this picture over here as I mentioned first we will get a proper raw uh, signal is been obtained. Uh, we will we will have a uh, stimulus being given. So, according to that the raw EEG is been obtained and then we can further we can uh, take the continuous data do further analysis and EEG ERP analysis and finally, we can get the averaged ERP. So, uh, for a we cannot uh, just uh, uh, get a perf for one stimuli we cannot uh, get any EEG uh, signal and all. So, what we have to do is we have to continuously do about uh, for 120 or 1000 recordings like that and totally we average together to obtain the ERPs to, uh, as such. So, just for one uh, uh, the whole experiment we, uh, which we get is a, a total continuous EEG file. So, in that EEG file we will get uh, we will uh, remove the we will take the particular uh, triggers or the events and then we average together and that is how we obtain the averaged ERPs. So, uh, in the stimulus over here it actually is uh, for a visual evoke potential. So, even for a visual evoke potential it is a flash of light or a uh, reversing checkerboard uh, and for P300 uh, we have to give a uh, oddball stimulus to be given that is or uh, 3 triggers to be given. So, I will just uh, I will just mention how the P300 triggers look like. Uh, then the auditory stimulus like the tones and all are being used for uh, uh, AEP and the MMN uh, uh, ERPs and for clicks basically for the ABR experiment. So, what is this ABR? ABR is the auditory brain stem response. So, uh, the before now till now uh, I, uh, in the previous tutorials I have mentioned that there are the uh, potentials that are obtained in the 100 millisecond is the uh, AEP. So, before this 100 milliseconds also there are a lot of processing that is taking place that is called as the auditory brainstem response. Uh, so, how it is that is from the here till the auditory cortex there will it will move through various cochlea the there will be a lot of um, uh, the, the the sound travels from the ear lobe to the uh, brain stem sorry the auditory cortex through various stages. So, that has been recorded in the first 10 to uh, 10 to 15 milliseconds in that range. So, that is called as the ABR and we give here is the clicks and that too in a fast it will be a totally uh, uh, fast uh, response actually and here even in the in case of uh, ABR the recording sorry the uh, the the uh, the for ABR uh, we have a uh, different uh, parameters of uh, filters that is being given for ABR. Uh, so, that is about the uh, different auditory stimulus and auditory responses that has been obtained. Then we have is actually the N400, N400 is actually a negative for a uh, negative peak that has been obtained in the 400th millisecond. So, how what is the stimulus that has been given is that we will have a sentence uh, we will give a, uh, a sentence will be given and in that the end last word of the sentence will be uh, uh, will be funny or it will it will be weird or it will not be it will not it will be incongruent to the, the uh, to the meaning of the sentence. For example, the pizza was too hot that is a ordinary sentence, but uh, we will uh, replace that hot uh, the pizza was too purple. So, it will be a difference there will be we will think that okay this word is not 
appropriate for this particular sentence. So, that uh, that particular uh, peak or that particular stimulus or that particular response that has been obtained is called as the N400. Uh, the similarly, there are various other many other uh, event related potentials are there like contingent negative variation, peri shaft potential. So, uh, this, those all are uh, different, uh, it all uh, 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 it is all for the different cognitive part of the brain for its functioning and everything. Uh, this re recognition potential is that uh, uh, we uh, where we can recognize a particular thing. For example, if you are given a, a, a alphabets uh, our English or Hindi alphabets and along with that we give any Chinese alphabets, you won't know what is the difference between the English and the Chinese. So, we will recognize the English alphabets, but we cannot recognize what are these Chinese alphabets. So, with the difference between that, uh, the, the that uh, deviant and the standard is what we get as the recognition potential. So, that is also a negative peak that will be obtained like the like the uh, mismatch negativity. Uh, so, this is how the uh, this is about the generally about the uh, event related potentials. The next uh, we will discuss is about this is how the auditory work potential is being given. So, we will uh, the this is uh, either you find this uh, auditory tones are given through the headphones or earphones or it can be given, uh, it can be generated by uh, the uh, speakers as well. So, uh, that is how the evoke potential has been obtained. Uh, so, based on we will have the electrodes and all connected and the headphones and all connected everything. So, the, the continuous electrodes uh, channels, uh, continuous data has been obtained along with this trigger is also been obtained. So, we can just average all the trigger channels together and finally, we can get the uh, ERPs of the auditory evoke potential alone. And this is the uh, the, the picture in the next, uh, the next is the evo uh, visual evoke potential. So, we usually we have a reversing checkerboard that has been obtained. So, here also we will get a negative uh, sorry there will be a the late positive complex, the N1, P1, uh, N2 complex that is the most common complex that will be obtained in the visual evoke potential as well as in the auditory evoke potential. So, I will just show you how the uh, VEP actually looks like. Uh, in the in the presentation uh, which uh, Dr. Mahesh had mentioned, we had saw the how the uh, auditory evoke potential was being generated from the uh, uh, presentation software. So, I will just show you how the visual uh, actually due to some other issues and all we could not uh, project the evoke, uh, visual evoke potential uh, to be shown. So, that is why I will just show you how it is actually been seen. So, this is how it looks like. So, this is how the uh, uh, VEP, this is how this this type of uh, movement, this, this it keeps moving for so long like uh, it will keep uh, reversing the checkerboard keeps reversing. This is this, this is how we get the uh, VEP recording has been obtained in this, uh, this particular, this is the stimulus given for that particular, yeah, uh, for the VEPs. Uh, so, I uh, will just discuss about uh, MMN and uh, P300 also. Uh, so, in MMN what happens is we will have a um, there are two uh, events uh, over there, one is the standard and another one is the deviant. So, it will be given in a, uh, this uh, this uh, this particular AEP, uh, the MMN recording sorry the MMN stimulus was uh, shown by uh, Dr. Mahesh where I was the subject where we have the uh, we sh there he, he shown was the duration MMN wherein there was different deviants, one particular standard and the deviance was 1000, 2000, 1000, 1000, 10 like that there are there were different deviants were being used, but what is the uh, thing is that uh, always this MMN it should be repetitive. So, if we have three standards then there should be one and one deviant that will be repeating for uh, for n number of loops. So, uh, that is how the MMN has been obtained. So, first we have the standards of, uh, uh, of 500 or any we can design our own experiment according to uh, the tones, we can make our own tones uh, uh, accordingly. And and then uh, we have to uh, record the MMN. So, we will give the tones are being given in this manner for standard, 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 deviant, standard, 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 deviant like that. So, this de deviant it can be anything, it can be 1000, 1100, 2000, anything it can be. Uh, so, uh, the 
difference between this deviant and the standard is what we called as the MMN. So, the MMN is nothing but the mismatch negativity. So, when what happens is that our brain uh, it, ha it, can, uh, it can remember a particular uh, event for a uh, short term memory we say. So, it means that for for example, if you want to remember a particular number for that particular moment you will might remember that uh, number, but then after few uh, minutes or hours you will not be remembering what is that number. So, that is called as the short term memory. So, that has been recorded in this MMN. So, uh, this MMN it can be the applications if you say it is actually can be used even in babies also in order to check whether their auditory function is proper or not whether they can way they can they can differentiate the different tones or not that is uh, basically it about the MMN. Uh, so, here the uh, standard is being given together and then one deviant then per, uh, three standards then a deviant like that. So, uh, always there will be a MMN there will be a peak that will be obtained in the uh, 150 to 300 in this range only we will have the MMN response obtained and basically always uh, mostly it will be obtained in the right frontal uh, in this part of the brain it will be in the right frontal part of the brain the uh, the response is obtained in case of MMN. Uh, so, this uh, this particular demo with presentation software was being given uh, where I was the subject and uh, that was already been done. Uh, the next I uh, will just give you an overview about how the P300 also looks like. So, P300 there will be um, three, st uh, three stimulus will be given one is a 4 centimeter then the 6 centimeter ball and another, uh, again a checker board. So, uh, the blue ball the 4 centimeter ball it is just like a flash of light that is coming. So, that will uh, give us an uh, it will just uh, uh, give a um, uh, visual uh, uh, evoke potential regular e visual evoke potential. Now, the target and the distractor is the important part. So, in here what happens is that when we are given the when the subject is been doing when we are uh, making preparing a subject to do the visual P300, we will instruct the subject to give a response whenever he sees a 6 centimeter blue ball. So, whenever there is a target seen the response button should be either. So, in this case what happens is that our working memory ok uh, it, we are we are just uh, telling the brain that ok whenever there is a 6 centimeter ball our working memory should uh, our working memory is being activated in this case. That is why whenever uh, th when this target has been shown we are giving a response. So, which means that our brain is remembering that yes this is uh, how it should uh, this is for this particular ball I have to give a response. So, we it will it is like we are giving we are we are uh, we are giving a, a working we are giving uh, for a memory cortex we are giving a working it is been done uh, with the given to that. So, then uh, we have a distractor in this distractor what happens is that uh, we will just uh, um, sometimes what happens is that there will be a 4 centimeter and a 6 centimeter, but uh, 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 but uh, we we will just remember that for uh, for we can just remember, but we have to give some distraction. So, that we pay attention that again there is this safe 6 centimeter ball again coming. So, uh, the distractor uh, ch uh, this particular stimulus is just because we have to pay attention to the uh, the target stimulus for that purpose we have the uh, distractor. So, the dist uh, when we uh, when we have this uh, and uh, this standard target and the distractor it has been given in probabilities of 80 percent 80 percent should be of uh, standards. So, out of 1000 uh, 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 thousand of the um, uh, triggers uh, nearly 800 triggers will be of standards, then uh, 100 triggers will be of the targets and 100 of DV, uh, distractor. So, what happens is that we can directly adjust uh, all, all the targets we can average and get the P3 B component and all the distractors can be together averaged and got, we can get the P3A component. So, the P3A component you find that it is obtained from the frontal part where we have the attention as I told you in the previous slides and all the attention uh, it will be taking part in the frontal part of the brain. So, P3A is obtained from the frontal part of the brain and P3B is from the parietal where we have to think a lot, uh, we have to have the working memory and all working properly. So, all of them. So, first the P3A component 
component comes up and then the P3 B uh, component comes up. Uh, so, this is how the 3 stimulus uh, interval looks like and I will just show you how the uh, the uh, P300 stimuli it just looks like ok, yeah. So, this is how the uh, P300 looks like we will be it will be highly randomized ok. So, this is about the P300. Uh, the next uh, uh, next uh, uh, slide is about the presentation software. So, this is the software which is actually now there are various ways in which we can give the stimulus this auditory visual stimulus and all there are various ways in which we can give for Inobio specifically we can actually be in uh, where we have we can give the uh, stimulus using this presentation software. So, the stimulus with uh, it runs uh, it runs in all the window system and it we can have a pr uh, all the behavioral. So, it, this is this is part this particular software was mainly and created by the neurophysiologists in order to uh, design all these uh, various uh, uh, cognitive uh, brain experiments etcetera memory experiments. So, uh, here we have the behavioral physiological and the physiological parameters like fMRI, ERP, MEG etcetera and all can be measured. Uh, it also delivers all those uh, 2D, 3D auditory stimulus everything it, been, it can give. Now, it can monitor a variety of device, it can interfere with external hardware. So, uh, interfere with external hardware which means that when we can uh, create a stimulus in presentation and it can be uh, given as an external, it can be given as an input to another software. For example, now in case of Inobio, the, um, the demo as shown. Uh, uh, the the presentation was software was working in one place and the triggers was being given to the Inobio uh, NIC uh, software. So, it, it can it can inter that that is what their interface it can interface with the external uh, hardware. And all these uh, ERPs, uh, sorry, the uh, auditory and the evoke potential. Now it should be in the probability of this range. It should be repetitive. Some for MMN in case uh, it should be repetitive, like three bo uh, three uh, standards and a one deviant like that. So that can be uh, programmed uh, with the uh, presentation software. So based on that, we can get the uh, different. Um, uh, the stimuli and it also helps it is uh, also extensible also it can be uh, used in various platforms various other places it also is built to precise the stimuli and we can if we want the response we have to uh, we have to uh, give the response externally. Now, if you want a response to that 6 centimeter ball we have to give that uh, particular uh, we have to externally say to the presentation software that yes we have to get a response in this particular for this particular stimulus like that. So, all those things are uh, that can be uh, done using the presentation software. Uh, so, this is about all the EEG acquisition and ERP uh, recording and how to create the stimulus and everything. Thank you.